Hello. Hey guys. Well, I got a little something special. Um, I have to share this with you guys because you're going to notice it anyway. Look at this table. <laughs> oh, good night. And check this out, guys. The, um, the length, well, the height of the table um, is adjustable. So this is the lowest height I have it on right here, which is perfect because my love seat sits low to the ground because I had taken the feet off of it. So this is perfect. Look at all this space that I have to do crafts, to do paper crafts, to do journals, to make a mess. So now guys, I don't have to go to the dining room table anymore. I can just pull out this portable table and it's fold. It's a folding table. I don't even have to go and get a folding chair, which I have. Um, and I was like, okay, I'll just get my folding chair. I'll put a pad on it, you know, a cushion on it and I'll be good to go. But because it goes down this low, I don't have to do that. So I can just pull it out when I need it and then fold it up and I'll figure, uh, I guess I'll figure somewhere to stick it. I don't, I don't have any space to stick it anywhere, to be honest with you. Um, but I'll make it work. I will make it work. I will find a place somewhere in this room and, um, and store it and just slide it up against something. Um, but believe me, believe it or not, now I don't know how rich you guys are, but my bedroom is big. I just don't have it arranged. I don't have the furniture arranged in the way that it was designed to be. And that's the problem with my whole condo. I don't have furniture in the places that it was designed to be because it didn't work. It wasn't for my, it wasn't user friendly that way, you know? So I live in my unit awkwardly. You know, the bed is not supposed to be all the way over there. You know, it's supposed to be right there facing this way. And this here is a closet. This is a closet. And I took the closet. And you see, it? there's shelves. And that's the shelves up there. So I'm sitting in a closet. And I put a little um, awning, you know, like I put that stuff, you know, a little curtain. But as you can see, this is all carpet. And then I got a calendar. So I'm not living the way that <laughs> I'm not living in this room the way that it was designed um, to be, and you know, call it a mess. You know, it's we've outgrown this place. I can just tell you that. Um, it. I really, really want to move, but it is what it is. So um, we'll figure out what what we're gonna do. But as you can see there, well, you probably can't unless I zoom in, but I've been doing a lot of work on my, um, what do you call it? My, um, uh, <laughs> that's a shame. My, um, okay, what is it called, y'all? Junk journal. All right. Um, I was also doing my nails. Nothing fancy this, for this month. Um, um, so I have my table here. And I have all my gear right here on this table and I can do, you know, what I need to do without being in the floor because I've already got a little bit of, um, what do you call this stuff? Some of this spilled onto the floor, onto that carpet that I told you guys I was not going to mess up. So I was able to get most of it up and the carpet still looks legit. But, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta make, I gotta do better to make sure I don't make a mess. So I saw this table on Amazon and I had to get it and it was reasonably, reasonably priced. Um, this, um, video is, is going to be called mixed media and I'm calling it mixed media because I'm going to talk about a mixture of different things. The first thing that is on the board is Manjaro and semaglutide. So those of you who um, clicked on this video just so you could hear about Manjaro, my Manjaro update, I'm going to get into that with you now. And I've been logging my journey on Manjaro in this book. 
Um, and, um, what I wanted to share with you guys is not long. It's really quick. And that is, I'm, I've got my last two boxes of Manjaro. I got, I picked it up the other day. Well, my husband picked it up the other day for me. And, um, this is, we're get, we're heading into the end of the journey. Um, at least for those of us who were dependent on the $25 a month coupon. Um, my weight loss has been slow, but it has been steady. I went through a, a, a portion where January and February, I just stalled. And on 15 milligrams, I stalled. And I was not losing any weight. I wasn't gaining any weight, but I just stalled. And I was wondering, is it possible to get a bad batch of Manjaro? Is it possible that your body can build up a um, tolerance, you know? Um, or is it just your typical, um, you know, plateau that we all go through no matter what diet plan um, we're on? So um, you guys know me. I do a lot of pray. <laughs> A lot of praying because I need God to be the leader um, in this weight loss journey because I cannot do it alone. I cannot be faithful alone. I cannot be disciplined alone. I, I can't without God's help. You know, then there's the talk of people who, um, that the possibility of getting can thyroid cancer. And if you get thyroid cancer from taking this medication, and say, for example, you have to have your thyroid removed. You know that you're going to gain weight like crazy because now you don't have a thyroid. And it, you're going to have to take all of these things, all of these medications. Um, I actually spoke to a woman who had that happen to her. Now, she didn't get um, thyroid cancer from Manjaro. So let me make that clear. But this is why I say I have to pray and lean on the Lord. We all really do. Um, because he's the one that can prevent us from getting cancer in the first place. Whether it's Manjaro, whether it's thyro thy thyrox, I'm just going to call it thyroxine. Okay, which is the thyroid medication that I'm on. Um, so what I wanted to say to you guys is, um, first of all, I've spoken to my doctor and my nurse practitioner, and they have both said that um, I can go ahead and start the semaglutide as soon as the end of this month, but I won't need it that early, but I'm going to purchase it early because I want to continue having a two-month supply just in case something crazy happens. You know, I always want to be ahead of the game, so if I can have an extra box, you know, just in case something goes wrong you know, I want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and order my first order of semaglutide. Um, now, semaglutide goes up to 50 units. That's the highest that I believe she explained to me. And the higher the dosage, the more the price can increase. So right now, they're starting me at a dosage that's costing me $374 at the end of every month. And... Um, but I told them, I don't want to start out on a low dosage. You know, I want to start, start out on a dosage that will, you know, give me some kind of weight loss. I want to have a better success at the semaglutide than I did with the terzepatide, with the Manjaro. Okay. Um, I really need to just have a really good long conversation with my doctor because I have a lot of questions. And, you know, one of them is, does the semaglutide compound, okay, that's a difference. Does the semaglutide compound pose any type of health risk as far as cancer is concerned for the thyroid? You know, he wouldn't be promoting it or using it or making it available if he felt that it would be putting um, us in danger. You know, his nurses have taken it and have had great success. But here's the thing that they did. When they took the semaglutide compound from him, they fasted the 16-8 fast. 
And, you know, that was the thing that I liked so much about Manjaro is because everyone was saying, you don't have to fast. You can just enjoy yourself, you know. But I do want to give you guys an update and let you know that I have been fasting. Um, and I feel a lot better. Way less bloating, way less everything. And I feel light on my feet. I feel more comfortable. And I don't know what happened. I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And I just somehow got into the zone. And I just decided this was what, what I'm doing. I don't go out in the summer months, okay? I never do. I have very bad heat sensitivity. And the thyroid medication that I'm on contributes to heat sensitivity. So what I've been doing is I've been sleeping. I've been taking a lot of NyQuil and I know that's not good but I've been taking a lot of NyQuil and what I do is I go to sleep and I sleep for at least 14 hours a day that's 14 hours straight without eating I'll wake up take my thyroid medicine with a lot of water and then I'll go right back to sleep I'll wake up at 3.30 in the afternoon and give my cat her medication. I'll drink some water and I'll go right back to sleep. And so I am relying on that. And that has been working great lately. And I've just been sleeping. I don't even remember what my husband looks like because we're literally now two ships passing in the night. Um, it is 12.30 and I am up and awake and he is asleep. But since I've been doing it for this past week, well, two weeks now, I have seen weight loss. I have felt weight loss. And um, so I'm still losing weight on Manjaro and maybe a little bit more now that I have been fasting and drinking a lot of water. I've only been eating two meals during my eight hour window. So I'm not doing 16, 8. I'm doing really like 14, 8. Um, after I work out, you know, and after I shower and I get myself together, then I'll eat a eat tuna on either a little bit of crackers or I'll eat chicken breast with a sweet potato. And I'll eat, I've been eating a lot of broccoli, like after a workout with a coconut amino. It tastes like teriyaki. It tastes like a sweet teriyaki, but it's coconut. So I sprinkle that on my steamed broccoli or raw broccoli and I've been eating that so that's what dinner been consisting been um you know what is what I've been for you know so just to minimize the carbs especially the white carbs the only thing that I'm trying to stay that's eat that's white is is chicken you know turkey white meat now there is the mission, I think it's called mission, and they have these zero carb, net carb um, tortillas, and they're 25 calories per tortilla, and it's very small. So white flour has to be keto approved. So I eat the 647 keto bread. If I'm going to eat a turkey sausage or turkey hot dog of some sort, then it's gonna be on the 647 keto hot dog bread okay um if i'm going to eat a tuna sandwich it's going to be on that keto bread and i allow myself one sandwich a day it can be a tuna sandwich it can be a turkey breast sandwich but it's one sandwich a day and i don't have to because it's keto bread so i i have a little wiggle room but i'm trying to keep that self-control and that discipline so one sandwich a day on keto bread and um, and making sure that after I have my workout and after I've showered and allowed myself to stay in the fat burning mode as much as possible, then it's chicken breast and sweet potato, um, broccoli with the coconut amino on it. And I noticed that since I've been fasting that I can't eat as much as I did. You know, I don't eat a full meal which is what it used to be when I first started on Manjaro, that stomach shrinking thing. So my portion size has definitely decreased. Um, also, I've noticed um, that the more I fast, the more I want to fast. I know that sounds crazy, but 
I feel good. I know that by sticking to this, I'm doing the right thing. And so it messes with me mentally. And so I don't know, Lord, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know. I'm just going to have to give credit to God because I kept praying for strength and discipline and help. And, you know, I should have lost more than, you know, I th- what, did I, what did I lose? I think I've lost about uh, 18 pounds now, about 20, 18, 19, 20 pounds since I left. I, not 20, like 18 and 19, 18 pounds, 18 pounds since I've been on Manjaro. Now I have, I'm due for another weigh in and I'm the way that I feel, I would probably say I'm, I'm, I'm probably, maybe I'm probably, maybe I'm 22, 20, maybe about 22 pounds. Um, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm grateful for the weight loss, but it's just that I know, and you know that if I had a fasted sooner, I would have lost more, but it's never too late. I still have two full boxes of Manjaro left and I have semaglutide, um, on the way. Um, some people said that they experienced better results on Wagovi than they did Manjaro, which is backwards. Some people said that they had worse side effects on Manjaro than they did Wagovi, but lost more weight on Wagovi. So, you know what, guys, I come to this really, this conclusion that, you know what, we can look to other people's testimony for guidance and direction, but the bottom line is we all um, receive this medication differently. And semaglutide compound is different from Manjaro or terzepatide compound. And I don't know how my body is going to react when I start taking the semaglutide. I really don't. But I trust that my doctor is starting me on a dosage that he feels is sufficient for someone who's been on 15 milligrams of Manjaro for the past three months. But I will talk to him further and see um, what other information that I can get from him. And then if it's anything that I know that you guys would want to know, I will definitely tell you. Now, I do want to add this in before you go, Manjarians. If you are on um, Theroxine, I'm calling it Theroxine, but you know what I'm talking about. The Thermotheroxine, whatever, Theroxine. That is a thyroid medication for hypothyroidism and it caused some people to gain weight I never knew that I never knew that I would have hesitated in taking it and I recently found out that if you are taking it it can hinder how fast how quickly you lose weight maybe Me taking that thyroid medication hindered my weight loss success with Manjaro. Maybe if I had a normal thyroid and I wasn't on any type of thyroid medication, I would have lost more weight. You know, um, that is a very, very strong possibility. So I am very blessed that being on this thyroid medication, this thyroxine, that I still was able to lose weight. But I know what you're thinking. Regardless, I still should have lost more weight because I still should have fasted. That's always going to be the thing. Well, you know, the weather is heating up now and I hibernate during the summer months. And it's, it's easier for me to lose weight in the summer than it is in the winter because I'm sleeping through summer. And because I can't stand to be awake, I can't stand the sun, the heat, the humidity, the loud noise, the bugs, everything about summer, it just, it bothers me. And the thing about it, guys, is if, say for example, I got to go get blood work done next Wednesday, I have to go at six o'clock in the morning before that sun starts to blaze down and be back home. Because once I get nauseous from heat, you know, heat nausea, it takes sometimes days for that nausea to go away and it's just not worth it you know and I have a doctor's appointment at 8 30 on the 15th 14th and I have to have the very first appointment and luckily I could walk to this doctor's office if I wanted to so as soon as I get in it's in and out before the heat of the sun you know can make me sick 
So, you know, that's how I have to live my life. So that is what I wanted to say about Manjaro. I heard that Lily might have it might be FDA approved for weight loss by the end of the year. That's fine and great. But if they don't have a $25 coupon like they did, you know, um, for this, it, it won't matter anyway. Right. Um, I think that the, those days of us getting that freebie like we did back in um, of last year, September for me. But for you guys, it started in June of last year. So, um, you know, I, I know they're not going to do that because they took such a loss you know, financially, but I did want to just make sure that I let you guys know what my plan is. So yes, I'm eating better. I'm eating less and I'm fasting every day. I'm fasting every day, not just five days a week. I'm fasting every day. I can do 14 hour fast every day without a problem as long as I stay asleep. And that's how it is. Now, if I happen to wake up and can't get back to sleep, we'll see. You know, I'm just focusing on drinking water, drinking water and chewing gum. Um, if it gets to a point where my stomach is literally growling and I'm not feeling and I'm starting to feel nauseous, I can handle stomach growling. That's fine. It's okay. Growl on. But if I start feeling lightheaded, if I start feeling nauseous, then I have to eat something. And I have plenty of protein shakes stocked up. I have plenty of plenty of protein bars. So that is what I recommend for you. If you feel like you need to eat something and you're fasting or something and you just can't hold out, make sure you go for something that's protein. Hard boiled egg is great. I love grabbing a hard boiled egg that helps out. The yolk in the egg helps with light nausea. Um, Emetrol helps with nausea. Um, drama mean helps with nausea. It just depends on what type of nausea you're having, whether it's hormonal nausea or motion six, sickness, or whether it's due to, to something else. So there's so many things to factor. So I apologize that it has been a while since I uploaded a video on Manjaro and, but I've just been taking it, you know, step by step and seeing it, how it goes and so that I can have something to report to you. So um, today when I got up to eat, um, I ate a tuna sandwich and it was on the keto bread and it was the tuna that I made. So that means it had very little to no mayo, very little mayo, but it does have a little bit of um, relish in it and everything is homemade. I mean, my homemade relish and because um, it's, I'm literally grinding up the pickles and I'm literally um um what do you call it grinding up the pickles I'm literally grinding up the peppers and so forth so that way I can control how much sugar is in it and I'm just keeping the carbs low but I'm not denying myself of carbs because I want something that will allow me to be consistent and just saying no carbs and just eating vegetables and meat is not going to work for me because I'm going to cause myself to have cravings. I have, um, for if I do decide that I want to have a cheat day, um, right now I'm not having cheat days, but if I do, I want to be able to not feel bad about it. If I feel like I want a piece of cake, I will bake my own cake. I have all the ingredients that I need to bake a cake from scratch. So that way I control what type of butter, eggs and milk or whatever is going to be in that cake. Um, if I want pancakes, I have sweet, I'm, you know, I'll make sweet potato pancakes with the fat free, sugar free syrup. Um, so yeah, today for breakfast, I had a tuna sandwich. I had, um, um, chicken noodle soup, but it was homemade. What I did was I made, I put in some organic mushrooms and organic celery and carrots and onions, tiny pieces of chicken breast and I can't tell you the type of noodles they were, but this was the healthiest noodles that I could get and chicken broth that I could get. And so that is my advice to anyone who um, needs to 
um, have a little bit of direction as far as what to eat and drink. I just drink a lot of lemon water, a lot of lime water, a lot of infused water. I chew a lot of um, sugar-free gum. And, you know, guys, sugar-free gum is not always good for you. You got to pick and choose what the best ones are. You know, but you got to do what you got to do and you just can't cross every T and dot every I perfectly on this weight loss journey because, you know, um, everything's got chemicals in it. Everything poses a threat to cancer. Okay. Manjaro poses a threat. Even probably semaglutide poses a threat. Um, the thyroxine, the thyroid medication that I take, it can cause cancer also. So, you know, I got to lean on God because I'm taking things that I don't have any other choice to take on, you know, on the, on the chance that I could get cancer. So it is what it is. So I massage my thyroid. I feel it. I check it for lumps. I check my breasts for lumps, you know, I, and I do what I can do, but I, it, for me, a lot of people say, well, is it worth the risk? Yeah, because you got to, you got to do what you got to do. You know, you just got to do what you got to do and you got to let, you got to put your faith into action someplace. You know, when we hear that the the air quality is poor, we don't have our windows open. Okay. When we hear that the, that the um, water level is bad, we don't go to the beach on hot days when the bacteria rises. We go to the beach and get in cold water when the bacteria levels are decreases. So, you know, we live a very, very, <laughs> um, I won't say complicated, but structured life, you know, because we are just doing what we can. And I just look at it that way, guys, you do your part, do what you can. And, you know, and really, really, really trust God to take care of the rest. And he really, you know, this is, we're living in the times where we have no choice, but to trust in God, you know? And so that's what I'm doing. You know, it does concern me that my thyroid medication can cause cancer, that Manjaro can cause cancer, some agglutide, you know, but I have to weigh things out. And that's why I like having this little bedside jotter, because this thing right here, you know, I can write down my concerns. I can write down what I'm, the things I'm going to think about, pray about, talk to my doctor about, and so forth and so on. So that's it for Manjaro um, into 27 minutes. So now I'm done with you, Manjarians. Um, be blessed. And for those of you who are interested in the next part of this video, um, hang in there. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. So I did want to share with you guys this thing here. I went and got some glue and I glued this lace this is such a, oh, this is so beautiful. And I got it from Amazon. That's where I got this from. It was $9 for a whole strip. And this right here is about half of the strip. So it was not cheap. I will not probably be getting this again, but I did glue this on here and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. All right. So right now, we are going to get into a quick little, and I mean really quick. All right, let's see. I'm just going to open this up. Lord, give us a real quick word. Real quick word. Now, let's see what this says. Well, it would be nice if I could get the book open, right? It's, it's brand new. All right, so this is what we opened up to, and I thank you, Lord, for it. And this says... God's protection. It says, I sing in the shadow of your wings and I cling to you and your right hand holds me, upholds me. And that is Psalm 63, 7 through 8. Now, did we just not talk about that? Thank you, Jesus. God's protection. Needles. Needles. Milk. Mushrooms, elevators, birth bees, and bees in blenders. These are just a fraction of the many phobias attributed to Mr. Adrian Monk, detective and title character of the TV show Monk. But when he and longtime rival Harold Crenshaw find themselves locked in a car trunk, Monk has a breakdown, a breakthrough that allows him to cross off at least one fear from his claustrophobia. It's while Monk and Harold are both panicking 
that the epiphany comes abruptly, interrupting Monk's angst. I think we've been looking at this the wrong way, he tells Harold. This trunk, these walls are not closing in on us. They are protecting us. Really, they're keeping the bad stuff out, germs and snakes and harmonicas. Eyes widening. Harold sees that he means and whispers in wonder. Sees what he means and whispers in wonder. This trunk is our friend. In Psalm 63, it's almost as if David has a similar epiphany. Despite being in a dry and parched land, when David remembers God's power and his glory and love, it is at if it is as if the desert transforms into a place of God's care and protection. Like a baby bird hiding in the shelter of its mother's wings, David finds that when he clings to God, even in the barren place, he can feast as with the richest of foods, finding nourishment and strength in a love that is better than life. When you have experienced God's care, for you while you're in a difficult place. Oh, I'm scared. I'm sorry, guys. When have you experienced God's care for you while you were in a difficult place? In this current struggle, struggles, might you learn to sing in the shadow of God's wings? Loving creator, sustainer, and nurturer, thank you for the miraculous way that your love seeps into my heart, even in the most difficult places, transforming them into the shelter of your wings. Well, I be doggone. You ain't got, you see that? You see, do you see that? For those of you who stuck around for the daily bread, you see that? I. What did I just now tell you? God's protection and you got to lean on God. He's the only one that can keep you from getting cancer from these drugs. He's the one that can, you know, he, he's the one. We live in a serious time, guys, where, you know, we're put constantly being put in a position where we have to lean and trust on God, where we have to put our faith into action. And as much as painful as it can be, it is also very, very, very much bl a blessing because we want it to be. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want to live an easy peasy life where I have never had a reason to trust God, to test God, to try God, to let, allow God to prove himself. I don't want that. That's, that's not what we're here for. This is school. You know, how are we going to learn anything if we don't go through anything? How are we going to see God's favor and his might and power if we don't go through things? So this right here just backed up the Manjaro thing. It just backed up the thyroid thing. It just backed up everything that I just talked to you guys about in, in terms of Manjaro. So this is my hope. This is my confirmation that, hey, you know what? All of us out here that have these concerns about, you know, these medications, trust God. From A to Z and everything in between, trust God. Because he's got you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. A thousand can chase 10,000. So look at it this way. God alone is thousand and he chasing away 10,000. So in other words, there is no problem. There is no demon. There is no devil. There is no nothing that is greater than God. God stands alone. Okay. Then, and you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. And if something does happen, you can best believe he allowed it to happen for a reason. So I just look at it that way. God can be my 1000. And he can chase away my 20,000, my 40,000. We can go on and on and on and on and on. There are angels that are camped around and about me, preventing things from happening. God is my dam, my D-A-M, my dam, which means in my book, <laughs> and I forgot what I told y'all in the last, in that one previous video. Um, I think it was devastating or destruction always minimized. 
That's what God, that's God standing there. He's my dam, that he's the one that prevents the rushing waters, the damaging waters from me. You know, he hides me. He's in my front, my back, my side. He is the most, he engulfs me. You know, he's that dam. And that, and that is destruction always minimized. So with that, I'm at 35 minutes and I know that this is video is going to split and I'm going to have to put it together. But if you stuck through and you watched my, my Manjaro, um, update along with this, you, you be blessed, be blessed because I'm blessed on that. That just gave me just an extra little boost in, um, my comfort, you know, um, so I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and I hope that you all have a blessed day and just know that no weapon formed against you will prosper and it won't work. It just won't work. So y'all stay fresh, stay alive, stay healthy. I love you guys. I love you. And I mean that you guys are closer to me than my own flesh and blood sisters. And I mean that seriously. You know, I can call on Kalani or Cherie or Travel Lady anytime, you know, and know that they'll be there, you know, and that's closer to, than my own flesh and blood sisters. So I love you guys. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video and I will see you in the next one.